Hey, this is Coach Boyston, and today we're going to be looking at the three domains of life. Um, particularly, how do we take all this diversity of life, like the amoeba over here, this bacteria, the jaguar, how do we take that diversity within all this life on this planet and group them into light groups so they're easier to study? Um, this is actually called taxonomy. It's the study of classifying organisms. And what's so important about this is if we didn't do this, it'd be really difficult. Think about if you were to walk into a Kroger or a Walmart and you had never been in one of those before. Let's say you don't usually go to Kroger and you go into a Kroger. It's not hard to find things, right? You don't go to the freezer aisle to find ketchup, right? You go to the area where you got ketchup and mustard and everything's grouped according to similarities. And so even if you haven't been into a grocery store before, you could walk in there and probably find your way around because of that. So it's real important that we classify organisms in a way that we can study them and it makes it easier for us to do that. So let's look at these three domains of life and just to kind of get things started, I wanna look at what are some characteristics of a living thing? Well, the first thing is all living things have to have this thing called homeostasis, meaning they have to have a maintain a stable internal environment. Uh, the next one's gonna be organization. You know, the cell is the basis for all life and, and organization there. And so we got cells that make up tissues and tissues, organs and organ systems. We have organization, living things have to have that. Uh, metabolism, meaning we have to be able to convert something into food or energy, whether it be plants that convert and make their own food as, as an autotroph through photosynthesis, or whether it be um, us who break down food for energy in the form of uh, ATP. And so uh, you have to be able to grow. You have to be able, obviously some of us grown higher than others, but you have grown. And so to be a living thing, obviously some growth has to be involved there. Adaptation. We learned with Darwin and natural selection, if you don't adapt to your environment, it's going to be very difficult to survive for as long as a living thing. Uh, response, you have to be able to respond to a stimulus. And the final one is reproduction. And so to reproduce, obviously, is what makes you a living thing. So let's play a little game called living non-living. I got a elephant here. This happens to be my two-year-old son's favorite animal in the planet. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because it's the biggest. And us Boydstons, we shoot for big things. And so... Um, the elephant, living, not living, it's alive. Obviously, we can see the babies there. It obviously reproduces, it grows, uh, has organization, all those things. Next one, lava. Lava is non-living. Now, you can make a stretch and say, well, it adapts, it flows, it expands, it grows. That's a really big stretch. That is non-living. The next one is trees. Well, we know trees are alive. They reproduce. We'll learn in a later unit how they reproduce, but they grow and uh, they do all those things. They respond to different types of stimulus, whether it be to grow towards light, things like that. Uh, snow, snow is not alive. Actually, it does a really poor job of adapting to the sun the very next day. Here in Texas, the second it snows, the very next day, it's about 80 degrees, and so it doesn't adapt real well. The deer, obviously, is alive. Now, this one here, you know, this is a tough one. You know, you ask any sci-fi scientist, and they'll tell you, it's up in the air. Some of them believe that these things are alive. They still remember their old being, who they were. And others will say they're just walking dead. They're, 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 they're nothing going on with them. So that's a difficult one. Now, one that's not difficult is going to be our viruses. We know viruses to be non-living. And particularly, uh, you know, we look at this bacteriophage right here. This is actually a bacteriophage is a virus that attacks bacteria. And this thing on its own can do nothing, it cannot reproduce, it can't metabolize, it has to actually infect, inject its DNA or genetic material into this uh, bacteria in order to reproduce. So viruses are non-living. We won't be classifying viruses anywhere in this uh, classification system as we move along today. So going to our phylogenetic tree, we have our three main groups or domains. We have the domain bacteria, we have a domain called archaea, and then a third one called the eukarya, or come from that word eukaryotes that we learned at the first of the year, organisms that have a nucleus. If we look down here at the bottom, we studied this with evolution, but this point right down here would represent what we would call a common ancestor. Uh, what that means is when we look at a phylogenetic tree like this is that this was the common ancestor to both or all the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukaryotes. And so they would, all three of these groups would point back to that common ancestor. And so that's what that point would represent there. And as you're looking at bacteria, we know that these are prokaryotes. These are organisms that don't have a nucleus. 
And then we have our archaea. These are going to be organisms that survive in harsh conditions. And they're real similar in some ways to bacteria, but not really. They actually used to be, back when I was in school, we learned this as a group called the Monera. And they actually had these two groups combined, which they don't anymore. It was about the 1990, I think it was, that we have actually started to separate. And scientists have adapted to this three-domain system and seen the archaea as a totally different group. Then you also have your eukaryote kingdom, or eukarya, which consists of your animals like us, which some of us are more animal than other, right? Sometimes you have fungus, uh, your plants, and then you have these things like slime molds, which would be a protist. And so just all kinds of different things going on there. So let's look a little closer at these groups. You'll notice, looking here, I got a Venn diagram. And you can see I am right here underneath this group called the eukarya because that's where I would fall. Um, whereas you have your bacteria and your archaea. The first thing I want to look at here is in the middle of our diagram. What is something all three of these groups have in common? Meaning, what do all life on this planet have in common? I remember one of our first units that we did, and it was on cells. All living things consist of cells. It's part of our cell theory, right? All cells come from existing cells, so on and so on. Well, cells generally have some type of DNA. And DNA usually converts over into an RNA. And we know that process. You can kind of start to see where I'm going with this. Proteins are the building blocks of all life. Well, what's the organelle that makes those? It is ribosomes. And then finally, you're going to have some type of membrane that's protecting. And usually some type of cytosol or what we call cytoplasm on the inside for all those uh, things on the inside of you as a cell. So all living things have essentially this group of material right here. So what's some differences between the groups? Well, the first one I want to look at here is going to be the eukaryotes. One defining characteristic about a eukaryote is organisms within this domain have a nucleus. We learned about eukaryotes and then things like bacteria down here, which are prokaryotes. Bacteria, prokaryotes, don't have a nucleus. Eukaryotes do. Um, and even the archaea do not have nucleus. They are prokaryotes as well. And that's why they used to classify them with this uh, other group of bacteria and called them the Monera. So one defining characteristic of the eukaryotes is we have a nucleus. Also, we have organelles. All right, we have organelles that do jobs for us, whether it be like a plant. You have chloroplasts that help with photosynthesis. Or like us, you have the mitochondria that helps us with uh, the production of ATP for energy. So we have organelles. With bacteria, one defining characteristic of bacteria is this word right here, peptidoglycan. And what is that? Well, if you look over here, if we had a DNA molecule there and then around our bacteria, we know there's no nucleus holding that DNA, we have a cell wall that goes around here. Well, this cell wall is made out of that chemical called peptidoglycan. And what's real important about that is you know if you've ever been to the doctor and had a bacterial infection, he can give you antibiotics to help fight off that infection. This is what we are trying to destroy is that cell wall so we can kill that bacteria. So it's real important that we have the ability to break through this peptidoglycan to be able to do that. So bacteria, they have no nucleus within their cells. And uh, one characteristic there is they have this particular chemical in their cell wall. Now with the archaea, what I want you to know is these are organisms that live in harsh environments. Now what that means is archaea are going to be organisms that can live where no other organism can, meaning salty environments, whether it be uh, in hot environments, acidic environments. Scientists have found these in soil and water, but these are, are going to be what we consider organisms that will survive in harsh conditions. And just to finish things out, um, you saw back on our other uh, tree, our phylogenetic tree, it looked something like this. We had our common ancestor, we had bacteria coming this way, and then off here we had the archaea, and then we had the eukaryotes. And you'll notice the archaea are on the same side with our eukaryotes. Scientists have actually found there's more similarities in here in this space between these two than there is and this space here between these two or this space here between these two and bacteria. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. This is just a look at the three main domains of life. And this is Coach Boyston. Have a good day.